It's 1995. Your word processor is open, and before you press a single key, you make the most important decision of your life. What font do I use? All the usual fonts are too conventional. There were very few, very casual typefaces that you could use. You keep scrolling. Too stately, too boring. But then... It pops out of the menu. What is this font? It was so different than everything else. The way it flows is strange. It had irregularity about it. And uniquely flawed. The stems aren't perfectly straight. They're quite wobbly. This is the font you want. And in that moment, you and millions of other people click on the button that says, Comic Sans. How did a font both loathed and cherished come to dominate the world? My name is Vincent Canaire. I was a typographic engineer at Microsoft. I contributed to lots of fonts like Webdings, Trebuchet, and most notably Comic Sans. So it's all my fault. To understand Comic Sans, you have to understand its creator. Years before his work at Microsoft, Vincent was working on his undergrad in New York City. We went to university in the 1980s. I was a quite young, rebellious, fine arts student. He'd spend a lot of time in art spaces. And I'd walk through the galleries of the old Soho and look at paintings and, and artwork. To him, what separated good art from bad art was this simple benchmark. If you didn't notice them, I considered that was bad. And if you did notice, it was good, because at least they made you stop and look. It either shocked you or you really liked it. But if you didn't even notice and you just walked through, it was a disaster. Vincent would take that philosophy to Microsoft, where he was challenged to make a playful font for a program called Microsoft Bob. And so I looked at Batman and the Watchmen and pretty much tried to draw on the computer something that looked similar to that, but not copying it. So that's how Comic Sans was made, by just looking at comic books and comic characters. Not everyone was a fan of the font's quirks. My boss, Robert Norton, he didn't really like the font, and he thought it should be a bit more typographic. And I argued and said, no, it should be weird. And, and I thought it stood out, and it wasn't boring typography that's in, in a school book. Though the font didn't make it to the release of Microsoft Bob, it was eventually pre-installed on every Macintosh by 1996. I started to see it when it was in, in the wild, so to speak. The first one I remember was a neon sign over a store called Fun Stamps. That's when I realized it's going to get used any way anybody wants to use it. And that just snowballed from there. The font spread like wildfire in ways Vincent didn't even imagine. When I travel the world and see it in, on beach towels, War memorials. On bread. Street signs. On everything. Its overexposure even spurred a group of designers to start an anti-comic sans movement. I thought it was funny. I didn't really find it offensive. After all these years, Vincent finds himself content with how history will remember him. And Comic Sans is not one of the better pieces of art, but conceptually it's one of the best things I've ever done. It probably is the best thing I, I have ever done. <laughs>